Well, Jim, we talked about what would this game be, 94 feet or 19-9. I would have to say it became a 19-9 game, one of the reasons why I think that Michigan has been able to do so well in this game. We also have to think about will fatigue be the factor, and the last thing that I think is important the rest of the way is free throw shooting. Neither team very good from the line and ever gets a big roll. How about the passing by Michigan right out of the timeout? And they got uh, the ball into the hands of the driving Weber, and he'll shoot one for a three-point opportunity. Well, Howard and Weber, how many minutes have these two guys played together now in two years? Plus, they played in some high school all-star games, plus during the summer. Excellent passing inside. Tough to catch a ball when you know you're going to run this buddy. And I said throw shooting. Is that Weber seven for seven? Seven for seven, Billy. Yes, indeed. And Michigan back of 19 for the game. And they're a 64% team free throw shooter. Seeing some big minutes here. Yeah, but you notice they're not looking for any threes. They just kind of dribble and looking for somebody else to pass to. Let's see if Delta take one. Looking to go inside. He gets it inside. Delta Rhodes. And a foul against Jalen Rose. Super Saturday at the Final Four. North Carolina, 10-point winner earlier today. Jim Nance and Billy Packer with three minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Young man from St. Anthony's, so they weren't represented by Bobby Hurley in this Final Four, but that great high school tradition continues with this young man from New Jersey. Roderick played one year with Bobby Hurley at St. Anthony's, three years with Danny Hurley and start all four of his years with coach Bob Hurley. Only Jay Walker of Seton Hall started all of his years at St. Anthony. See what a much better job Michigan's doing now against the press because they're bringing back enough ball handlers so that the press can't be a That foul on Mashburn, Billy, his fourth. Obviously critical. And remember last year in the great Duke-Kentucky game, Mashburn with the monster mash of the game, but he did fall out. They did not have him available for what turned out to be the pass and shot of the year. Tonight on CBS, stay tuned for Raven following the conclusion of tonight's game. That's tonight on CBS. Two shots for Weber, his first miss. By the way, as we see Jackson check back in, last night down on Bourbon Street where all the fans gathered, I saw John Pelfrey. Pelfrey told me that Rick Pitino brought back Pelfrey, Richie Farmer, and Sean Woods all back to the Final Four. Darren Feldhaus couldn't make it. Bringing back the kids that were just second shy of getting here to the final four a year ago. Jim, we talked about free throw shooting, and that's something that statistically over the course of the year usually kinds of average out. So you mentioned Michigan with 17 for 19, and they're the first the signs that get back down to reality. Or, oh, there he is with the big three that puts him up too right off the screen, got away from Jackson. Ahead, Howard with a one-handed catch. Feeds Weber underneath. Weber, nope, Howard on the follow. Boy, those two work so together. 225 remaining, tied at 67. And Jimmy Jackson given no room for it. There he goes again. Ray Jackson leaps high for the rebound. And Jim thinking overtime a little bit here at a tie score. Michigan on this great run of wins they've had since Indiana played two overtime games, won them both. That has not been Kentucky's problem. Under two minutes. He's looking for Howard to move to get a better angle. There it is. Howard. Jackson underneath. Put back. Weber tips it in. Ray Jackson again, Jim. The GW game after the missed fouls. He just works so hard on the boards. Huge putback. Cricket comes back in. There will be some tired guys out here. That was a great job by Jackson just to keep it alive with his strength to allow Chris Weber to be in position. Billy, Jamal Mashburn has not scored from the floor in the last 10 minutes of game action. And a push off on Jimmy King away from the ball. 
Now, King has really shadowed Ford all day long, and there was a case where he more than shadowed him, put him to the floor. Do you see the solid screen coming up? And there he tried to come over the screen, and sometimes they've been touch fouls down, and sometimes inside, it's been a little different story. And here's a young man you want on the foul line. He will shoot. He will shoot two. 88%, Billy. Two of them to tie. Now he showed some range yesterday in that little horse game that was unbelievable for a man his size. Transfer from Missouri. Big eight all rookie team as a freshman out there. Ties it at 69. 126 remaining. It's been everything anybody could ask for two real heavyweights in the college game. Jalen claps his hand and says, give me the ball. And he'll bring it across. Weber has position on cricket. Up and over. And Michigan takes the two-point lead. Great timing by Weber to come from the weak side over. Under a minute to go. Burn for a basket. He hadn't scored, like you said, in a while, Jimmy. He's got to be looking offensively to get the ball back. Weber and, Weber and Howard keep switching on him. What a critical possession. Down two. 40 seconds remaining. Nice patience by Kentucky. Mashburn. Short. Tipped up. Smallest guy in the floor. Takes the three for the lead. Tim misses the jam the follow. Well, Dent could have made that play much easier, Jim. They say it's Kentucky basketball. I think it was. I think it was. Ray Jackson couldn't get to it. That's the second huge missed dunk of this NCAA tournament. Timeout, Kentucky. Here we see the missed dunk. Brian Reese we remember just last week against Cincinnati, could have ended everything for North Carolina, missed the dunk shot, and there was a case if Dent would have been a little bit more relaxed, he kind of lost the ball, squeezed it on out. Now, Jim, what you got to think about, Mashburn has not scored in 12 minutes and 10 seconds. He's your number one guy, somewhere he's got to touch this ball. Ford sets the screen for him, that doesn't work. And now if you're Michigan, you got to watch out for a three. This clock, by the way, does not register, register tenths of a second. Oh, he walked! Ford got away with it, has there it is. back, and almost turns it over, and a foul call on Michigan. Travis Ford walked, got by with it, and now you send the 88% free throw shooter with just 10 seconds to the line. And if you're Steve Fisher, you've got to think of what do you want to do? Do you want to get the ball up to half court and then attack with your high-low? There was the walk. Got by with it. And King called on the reach in, fouls out. That's his fifth. King fouls out with only two points. Hey, Rick acts like he was right on that one. Boy, what a tough young guy. King goes out. Polenka in. Ten seconds. You got plenty of time to get it on the court. Expect Kentucky, obviously, to press. Ford will shoot two. Two to tie with 10 seconds remaining. Out. They can get it up to half court and then proceed from there. The second thing that I think you have to remember, three times this year against North Carolina, missed shot and a put back against UCLA, a missed shot and a put back to win, and against Indiana, almost a put back. And what are they going to call? Nothing. No call. Rose now takes the timeout. 
timeout with three seconds to go. Not a good idea to waste seven seconds to get at the half court. You got to get up there with a pass. Rick Patino saying, I think it was a charge. A no call is made here. Delk moving his feet. Jimmy, I think that you got to call that a charge. The guy put his hand out there. Patino talks about him. Rick Patino agrees with me. He thought he had it. Oh, yeah, I think so. The defender moved right out. Jalen Rose puts his hand, and of course, Steve Fisher won't react on, our, on the same base that I would have, but I, I think that you don't want to waste seven seconds to get at the half court. That's, That's a, too late. Good you point, Billy. They have only three seconds now to operate with. Exactly. Bounding at midcourt. If they get at the half court with three seconds, that gives them seven seconds to go high-low. Now they're almost forced to set some kind of a screen on the wing, get off a jump shot, and as I pointed out, UCLA on a putback for a win, North Carolina a putback for a win, and almost that same situation against Indiana. Let's sneak a peek now here at Steve Fisher and see what they're diagramming. Jim, I think what you're looking for is a screen from the opposite side, send the man to the ball for the jumper. They don't have time for a lot of interior passing on this play. They gotta get a shot off quickly and then hope that they can get a put back for a score. One pass is probably going to be all you can get unless you can get one to hit right under the basket. We have no tenths of a second on the clock here at the Dome. And now Michigan has no more timeouts, but that shouldn't be a factor. Kentucky has two. And probably won't be a factor there either because if something happens and a basket goes in, Kentucky sure wouldn't be able to get much going except we said that last year when the miraculous pass took place by Grand Hill to Christian Lake. I think the Kentucky kids are thinking at all about how they were shot down on the last second shot or go. And now what happens is Rick Pitino with the two timeouts to seize what the deployment is for Michigan and calls a timeout himself. So timeout Kentucky. We'll take one with him. We'll be right back. Jim, Rick Pitino changed his defensive deployment. He's not putting a man on the ball. Look for Jalen Rose to handle it, get the shot up, and then go, Rose. go rebound it. Rose puts the shot up. We're going to overtime. Michigan. It's fourth overtime game, and it's last eight. Not and much of an opportunity here, Billy. Well, this is all you can do. A good idea by Michigan. Get the shot up and then go to the board. Jalen Rose wanting the foul. I think pretty good no call there. Dent held his arms up. 